Dynamic Array Basics With traditional arrays and STL array, we need to know the array's size at compile time, and it cannot be resized. But we can use pointers to dynamically allocate space for an array. These are called dynamic arrays. Our normal variables thus far all get automatically allocated to stack space, and freeing the memory is handled automatically. A dynamic array is allocated in the heap memory space. We manually allocate and free this memory using a pointer. Creating a dynamic array takes this form. Data type, asterisk, variable name, equals new, data type, square brackets, size. The size can be a variable and does not need to be an integer literal or named constant like a traditional array. We can also declare a pointer and use it to allocate a dynamic array later on. So we could say, data type asterisk pointer name equals null pointer, and then later in the program have pointer name equals new data type square brackets size. We have to manually make sure to free that memory space before the pointer loses scope with delete square brackets pointer name. If we don't free the space, then that memory area will be unavailable until the program is closed and the OS frees its memory. This is a memory leak. Modern C++ does offer smart pointers that handle the memory management automatically, but it is still good to know how to work with memory on your own if you're studying computer science. Using a dynamic array will look mostly the same as working with your traditional array. Design-wise, you will probably want to keep a variable to track the array size and the amount of items currently stored in the array. This way, as you add new items to the array, if you find that it is full, you can resize the array. To resize an array, we have to do these steps. 1. Use a pointer to allocate a larger memory space at a new address. 2. Copy the data from the old array to the new array. 3. Free the memory pointed to by the original array pointer. And 4. Update the original array pointer to point to the new, larger memory space. For most projects, you should generally use an STL vector instead of handling the memory management portion. But if you take a class like data structures, you'll need to be able to work with pointers to learn how different data structures work.